Michael thoughtfully looked at the monitor. His restaurant is only a month old, and he hasn't yet been able to hire real security. Of course, he knew perfectly well that his employees could harm the restaurant. Someone could do more harm, someone less. Very often, people steal. They have different reasons, but he couldn't let something go wrong in his restaurant because of it. Michael raised money for several years to open it, and now, when he was doing better than he had planned, he watched his dishwasher carry a large bag to the exit. But he only installed the cameras three days ago, so she's been doing this for a whole month? He stood up resolutely. Theft must be stopped in the bud. Strange, because this girl is very young, and it doesn't look like she was a thief. But apparently, she very skillfully hid her true face. The restaurant closes in half an hour. The dishwasher and receptionist are the last to leave. He would just have time to catch her. Michael wanted to catch her for stealing because he lives literally three blocks from his restaurant. It's a five minute drive by car. He pulled up, turned off the headlights and waved. The same dishwasher was supposed to appear any minute. Victoria carefully adjusted her bonnet and whispered, that's all. Today, my girl behaved well. A little patience. Now your mother will pass a little and pull you out. Victoria checked everything again. The holes made in the bag are not closed. Christina felt comfortable. Half an hour ago, Victoria fed her, which means the baby will sleep soundly. She knew very well that she couldn't do it anymore. What happens if someone finds out about it? Victoria's daughter will be taken away, but there was no other way. Victoria's milk disappeared immediately. The mixture cost so much money that the children's allowances were only enough for two weeks. Also, diapers and utility bills. The girl didn't know what to do for a long time, and then she found out about the opening of a new restaurant and about the recruitment. When she came to the interview, she didn't yet know how she would be able to fulfill her duties. She really needed a job, but her neighbor warned her that she could only sit with Christina no more than two times a week, and Victoria will clean her apartment for that. When Victoria saw the place where she would work, and realized that the dishwasher in the restaurant would be alone for now, a plan was born in her head. It was so unreal and so dangerous that Victoria was even confused. And then she tried. Christina was only a month old when Victoria came to work with her for the first time. The baby was so calm that she lay quietly and slept in the back room, where there was a supply of dishes. There was a lot of space, there was also enough light, and Victoria maintained cleanliness there. Victoria was left without parents as a child. She lived with her grandmother. Her grandmother was romantic. Such things as everyday life, the old woman was not interested. From the age of 10, Victoria took care of all the affairs in the house. Her boyfriend Aaron conquered her immediately. She didn't just fall in love, she went crazy with love. Her grandmother died a year ago, and the girl immediately offered to Aaron to move to her. He agreed, but when he found out that Victoria was pregnant, he disappeared in an unknown direction taking with him the valuables that were in the apartments. Victoria didn't go to the police. She was so ashamed that she tried not to go outside. She almost made it. And everything would be fine if those people didn't come to her. They wanted her to sell them the apartments. She was not going to sell anything, and they said that a car could accidentally hit her. And then her child would become an orphan. On the same day, her milk disappeared. And then Victoria realized that now she was starting real tests. Work was her salvation. She was paid every week. She needed to think about food, and they had enough money for everything. Victoria tried not to think about what would happen when Christina was three to four months old. She's strong and smart and can handle it. Although, recently she had very doubts that she was strong and smart. Victoria carefully placed her bag on the floor, closed the door, turned and met the owner of the restaurant. Show me what you carry in your bag. Not a single restaurant can withstand if you steal such volumes. Victoria blocked her bag. I have never stolen anything. Shame on you. He laughed. You should be ashamed of yourself. Then he became serious. Show me what you carry in your bag. Otherwise, I will call the police. Victoria sighed, and in the bag, Christina began to stir. She sat down, opened the bag, and Michael gasped. Child, from where? This one is yours? Are you working with a child? Victoria, meanwhile, took Christina in her arms. Am I fired? Wait, let me drive you home. How far do you live? We live around the corner. Then let me walk you home. 
Michael was well aware that Victoria wears such a baby to work, not from a good life. He himself went through a very difficult life with alcoholic parents. If he hadn't been taken away from them, maybe he too would have become like them. They reached the house, but Michael didn't want to retreat. He went up with Victoria to the desired floor, and when the girl looked at him expressively, he said, I would like to drink a cup of tea. Victoria shrugged. She doesn't mind tea. He still won't let her work with the baby. She quickly changed Christina's clothes and put her to bed. And then she went into the kitchen where Michael was making tea. He looked at her cheerfully. I decided to make tea myself. Victoria sat down and realized how tired she was, not physically, but mentally. This is tension due to the fact that she can be kicked out of work if they find out about the child. And suddenly she burst into tears. Oh my God, what should I do now? Michael sat down across from her and pushed her mug. Now tell me. She looked at him in surprise. What? Everything from the beginning. Where you were born, where did you study, and so on. Victoria spoke. She talked, sometimes sipping tea. She spoke and understood how unhappy she was. Everything happens to her, not like ordinary people. And why? She didn't know the answer. While she was talking, Michael didn't look at her. He also wanted to cry because he fully understood the injustice of life. We will do the following. Stay at home for a couple of days. I'll call someone instead of you. And we need to come up with something in these two days. We? I can't leave you in this situation, especially since you wash the dishes well. I will go. Good night. He quickly got up and left. Victoria didn't even have time to thank him. She sat a little longer and went to lock the door. In the hallway, several large bills lay on the bedside table. Victoria leaned against the wall and began to cry again. The next day, she had to change one bill. Christina has a fever. The call doctor prescribed her medicines and vitamins. The young mother quickly ran to the pharmacy while Christina slept. Fortunately, she only needed to get to the next house. She closed the door behind her and suddenly the bell rang. Her heart began to pound. She thought it was Michael. Victoria quickly looked in the mirror and flung open the door. She immediately tried to close it, but was prevented by the leg of a young man who smiled impudently at her. Hello, single mother. Why are you so bad at welcoming guests? He pushed her away and entered the apartment. He came along with another man and a girl. They brazenly settled down at the table, and the girl began to lay out some papers on the table. Do you think well? I thought, get out. Otherwise, I'll call the police. Call, and we'll see. Just keep in mind that by doing so, you're assigning your own sentence. Think about the child. Victoria choked with indignation. Who are you? What do you need? I will not sell the apartment to you. You will sell. It's just that your apartment is getting cheaper every day of your perseverance. Therefore, the sooner you agree, the more money you will get. The young man named the amount and Victoria laughed, although she was very scared. Are you kidding? This is the cost of a bathroom in this house. He smirked. And in a couple of days, you will still agree, only you will receive even less money. Get out, I'm not going to sell anything. He moved towards her. Victoria cringed, but then the young man somehow strangely jumped up and collapsed to the floor. Michael stood behind him. He turned to those who were sitting at the table. Do I need to explain to someone else that the apartment is not for sale? The guest quickly disappeared and Michael turned to her. Why didn't you tell me about them? I didn't know they would come again. Victoria looked very scared. Tart sank. She's so tender and defenseless. Pack your things. We're leaving. Where to? You'll come to me. I'm almost never at home anyway, and you'll be safer there. These rascals can't do anything. Victoria obediently went to collect things. In 30 minutes, they were at Michael's apartment. Christina looked at the large apartment with admiration. Your home is beautiful. It's now. You should have seen her when I first bought it. Some walls, everything is broken. By the way, this will be your room. He flung open the door. Victoria noticed a man's bathrobe and slippers. This is your room. But it's big and warm, so you'll live here and I'll go to that room. So make yourself comfortable. I have to leave now on business for a little while. I'll be back soon. Michael has gone somewhere. 
Victoria unpacked her things, then she went to the kitchen for some water. There is a mountain of dirty mugs in the sink. Looks like Michael drinks only coffee at home. She washed the dishes and looked in the refrigerator. An hour later, cutlets were already frying on the stove, potatoes were boiling in a saucepan, and Victoria was preparing a salad, smiling at Christina who was lying on the kitchen sofa, propped up with pillows. The door slammed. A sweaty Michael came into the kitchen. I'm just very hungry, but we'll eat later. Follow me quickly. Victoria grabbed Christina in her arms and followed him. There is a brand new baby crib and stroller in the hallway. And in the crib was a few more packages, apparently with clothes. Oh, I don't have that kind of money. And I don't even know when I can repay you. Michael smiled. What strange woman, who asks you to give me money? After dinner, Victoria and Michael began rearranging the apartments. Michael was fooling around and Victoria was laughing. Even Christina, who was lying on the big bed, tried to mutter something in her own language. Victoria didn't sleep at this night. Michael didn't sleep either. He suddenly realized he is very well. He is not alone in the house. Michael propped himself up on his elbow. Some time will pass and Victoria will want to return to her home. She doesn't want someone else, and he knew perfectly well that he didn't want her to leave. At breakfast that morning, Michael casually said, We need to get married. The knife dropped from Victoria's hands and bounced loudly across the floor. What? I say that we need to get married. Christina needs a father and you need protection. Victoria looked at him with huge eyes. I never thought that proposals for marriage could be like that. Michael lowered his fork and looked at her. What else could he say to her? That he fell in love like an idiot with a woman with a child who was washing dishes in his restaurant? He still tried to find some right words, but Victoria suddenly reached across the table and kissed him. Michael seemed to have been electrocuted. He pushed her away from him. He took the phone that was on the table and dialed a number. Can you manage today without me? I have an important meeting and I won't be at the restaurant today. And by the way, find a new dishwasher because Victoria won't come to work anymore.